Hello guys, welcome to Photographics Academy. All right, so today we are doing something very interesting. I'm going to show you how I was able to retouch this particular image. I was able to transform it from this, this, just using my door for you retouching action and my frequency separation manual action. So what I wanted to do in this video is I wanted to compare between the manual frequency separation and using dot for you retouching action to know exactly which one is going to do the job. So we're going to do it live here and you will see how that is done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start with my frequency separation manual action. So I'm going to zoom in on the image to make sure there is no blemish we need to remove. Okay, so I think we are good. We are good on the blemish area except for this, which is not entirely a blend. I think it's part of the skin. So I'm going to just zoom out and run my frequency separation. So I'm going to come to my in bits over here. Okay, so we just notice I'm just noticing now that this is a system bit image. So I'm going to delete the 8 bit action and make sure we stick to the 16 bits. So I'm going to come to 16 bits. So we'll make sure that everything works out well. So my my Gaussian blur should be somewhere around five. It's a full body image. So I'll have the effect of what I'm doing directly working on my image. All right. So hide my high frequency layer. Go to my frequency separation. Uh, go to my mixer brush to make sure that you are maintaining these settings. Then I'm going to zoom in on the image and start painting over my image. So one of the secrets of frequency separation using your mixer brush is to make sure you paint the highlights and your shadow separately like this area. I'm going to paint the highlights separately like this. Paint it separately, then paint the shadows separately as well, like that. Yeah. So if I want to blend this area in, I'm going to keep the brush in a way that half of it is in the shadows and half of it is in the highlights that I'm going to just paint over. So the reason I'm doing that is to blend both the highlights and the shadow together. They are just like that. Okay. We'll have the, that blended in. Come back here, start again. Yeah, just like that. So this is how you do it. You cover the whole image. You cover the whole image. Make sure that your highlights and your shadows are being painted separately. The moment you paint the two of them together at once, you begin to distort your image. Your image begins to look bad and all of that, you, which you wouldn't want to have. So just gradually take out your time and paint this. So if we keep going like this, this is going to make this video extremely long and I wouldn't want to take you through all of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up the whole process to make sure that we do not waste your time. But you've already grabbed the basic of what I'm doing. So I'm just basically painting the highlights and the shadows separately. That's how we're going to do it till we are, we are done with all the page. Don't go into it like that. So I'm going to speed it up now so that I will not waste your time. Okay, so this is the frequency suppression. What we are done. So let me just check the before and after. Let me just show you the before and after quickly. So this is our before and our after. After. So this is before. This is after. Before. After. Subtle so changes. Let me zoom out a little so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. So this is the before. This is the after. This is the before. This is the after. Look at the body. Okay. So now. This is us working with uh, frequency separation manually edited, manually edited. So I'm going to take a snapshot of this right here. I'm going to take a snapshot of this. So how? Let's name that manual. Then I'm going to delete it and do done for you. So I'm going to delete this. Uh, I think I need to delete this too. Yeah. Okay. So beautiful. So I'm going to delete this. 
quickly that I'm going to come and run my dawn for you. Retouch action, so this collapsed. So this is my dawn for you. Zoom in a little to see what you are doing. So I'm going to play it and probably keep it somewhere around one. Play. All right, so our dawn for you is ready. Beautiful. Our dawn for you is ready. So I'm going to also take a snapshot of this. Take a snapshot. I'm going to rename that done for you. Done for you. Yeah, so this is cool. So I'm going to delete this. So let's compare between the two. Let's see exactly the one that is better. So this is the manual result we had. This is the done for you result we had. Let me zoom out. Yeah, beautiful. So this is the manual result we had. This is the done for you result we had. So go to the comment section. Tell me exactly the one that resonates with you more. The one you prefer, the one you like better. Just go to the comment section and tell me the one that you prefer, the result that looks better to you. So this is done for you. I like the way it's maintaining a whole lot of dimensions and all of that. This is the manual one. So just go to the comment section and tell me exactly the one you prefer. So moving forward, I'm going to stick with the manual because I already did some things there that I wanted to show you the dodging and burning and all of that. So I'm going to stick to the manual. So this is the frequency separation that we'll have. So I'm going to zoom in. So we're ready to cut our time and do dodging and burning. So this is the result of the dodging and burning or after. So I'm going to open up the group and show you exactly what I did with the group open. So this is the burn. Let me hide the dodge. So this is the burn here. If you hold your alternate and click on the mask, you are going to see exactly what we did with the burning. So this is the, ma the masking of the burn because we wanted to maintain the shadows. So all the areas that has white in it are the areas that the bone worked on. The areas that doesn't have that are black are the ones we didn't touch. So that was exactly what we did. We made, we just made sure that the shadows became more profound. You can even decide to duplicate this and it becomes stronger depending on what you want to do. So this is our, our dodge here, over here. This is our dodge over here. So this is before, this is after. So I think the bond that we introduced was too much here. Yeah. Let's just drop it down. Okay, so this is the dodge layer. Before, after, before, after. Let me also show you what we did. So basically, we made the highlights a bit more profound. Yeah, that was exactly what we did. So I'm going to open it up again. You can as well decide to make it stronger by duplicating and probably reducing the opacity or the fill. Yeah, the opacity of the group like that. So just to make the dodge and bond even more profound and stronger. So this is before, this is after. Let me zoom out so you can see it well. This is before, this is after. Let me come a bit closer. This is before, this is after. So I think that already shows exactly what I was talking about. So I'm going to delete this, the second ones we brought in. So I'm going to delete them just to have it as subtle as it was originally. Beautiful. So now let's get to the second phase of the video where I'm going to show you what I did with the background and what I did with the color grading before you saw the result that I showed you in the beginning of the video. All right. So welcome back. So our dot and bone applied. Yeah. Welcome back to the video. Okay. So this is the second phase of the video. I'm going to give you a walkthrough of what I did to achieve the results you are looking at. So the first thing we did was that we used Liquify to fix the hair. So this is the hair before, this is the after. So we use Liquify to fix the hair just to make to make it look even more flawless and beautiful. So after that, I introduced the color grading group. So let me open it up so you can see exactly what we did. And before I forget, sorry, the lots that we use for the detail of this image, you are getting it for free. The lots pack we use, you are getting it for free. And the background as well, we are giving it out in this video for free. So this is the color grading that we had on the skin tone. So let me show you, this is before, this is after, this is before, this is after. So we had few color gradings applied. Let me hide them so you can see it working on the image. So this one is actually the solid color. So, uh, all right. So the first thing we did was that we applied a color lookup table and we changed the blend mode is at normal. We just applied a color lookup table. Then we created a, a selective color adjustment layer over it and created a hue saturation adjustment layer over it and now created a solid color adjustment layer over it. And that was how we were able to come up with the skin tone before, after. 
us how we came up with the skin tone before after and like i said you are getting the lot for free you are getting the lot for free so the next thing i did was that i took out time because i noticed that the skin tone became dark the skin was too dark for the image so i increased the brightness of the skin specifically targeting the skin using my color range and after that we created a stamp visible layer yeah? created a stamp visible layer yeah? let me zoom in to see if i did anything on that layer i think i should have renamed yeah okay so we created a stamp visible layer yeah? to help us make few adjustments so after creating the stamp visible layer i took out time and separated the image from the background yeah so i'm going to show you the whole layers involved in that so took out time separated the image from the background because we needed the background to get a bit darker so this is before this is after we just darkened it down a little so then after doing that before we introduce the background so this is our image right here yeah beautiful so after doing that we introduced a little we introduced the background that we used for the image let me hide the mask let me remove the mask so you see exactly what we did so just took our time use our mask to blend in the floor area to blend in the floor area so that we can have the image have a base looking like it's on the floor but after doing that i felt okay that this can be better if we even inculcate a little bit of the background into the image so i had to hide the mask entirely i had to hide the mask entirely and bam our image opened up but the problem was that we are losing the cotton we are losing the cotton to the image yeah look at this area you will notice that we are losing the cotton so that brought us to the point where we had to reintroduce the cotton back yeah we had to reintroduce the cotton back then we did few color gradients just to create a global color gradient so okay so i think i mistakenly deleted the layers where we have the cotton back so basically how we brought it back was very simple how we brought it back was very simple we just took our brush without hiding the mask and now brought in the whole background except the cotton just like this take out your time pick up your brush just brought back the whole background except the cotton yeah just like that that was basically what we did to make the, the cotton area and the background blending so well so after doing this we now took out time and made sure that the edges of the cotton was probably probably properly blended in sorry so we just did this yeah so this area we're having spill so i'm going to take it take care of it just to restore the original cotton into the image nice so paint here a little bit more yeah just like that i remember the blend mode is in overlay this is the image without the blend mode being in overlay going to look really weird so how to keep it at all like to make it look very very realistic you can decide to even duplicate this change this one to mama change this one to mama remove the mask don't know if that's going to work just wanted to check it okay so that wouldn't work that wouldn't work i've seen what i wanted to check all right so this is what this is what, what we did but to add a little bit of drama to the whole stuff because i was the one that introduced the gradient light over here just to add a little bit of drama to the whole stuff we had to brighten up the whole image and added a little haziness to it like you can see over here added a, a little haziness to the background then introduced the gradient light an orange gradient light from here and an orange gradient light from here and that was how we came up with this results that you are looking at right here so let me show you the overall before and after of the image when we started so i'm going to also take a snapshot of this just to have the overall before and after okay so we come up to this area so this is our snapshot this is the before okay so i think i need to quickly delete this ones let me delete all of this so that we can be able to see the overall before and after yeah okay so this is the before the overall before and after of the image this this is the before of the image and this is the after right here but this is the before sorry this is the before and this is the after sorry 
pace. This is still before, yeah, when we started, the whole thing was looking really weird. And this was the after when we are done with the composition and the retouching. Don't forget to tell me the exact effect you prefer in this image. Do you prefer the manual frequency separation or the done for you retouch action? Thank you for watching this amazing video. Remember the background you are getting is for free and the, the lot you are also getting it for free. One more time, thank you for watching this amazing video. Do make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell to get notified every single time we drop a new video. Until then, see you.